So we are going to start module five, which is going to use the GeneMania application. So um, this module is called Gene Function Prediction. And this module was linked to a pre-recorded video that had uh, all the details about the theory about GeneMania. So I, um, I hope that uh, you could uh, watch the, the video and you haven't, then you can still watch it tonight, I suppose. So um, so this video was pre-recorded by Craig Morris um, because we're going to use the software called GeneMania as our, so yeah, here is some, oh, that's the copy. Okay, I thought it was the speaker. Uh, so, so the video, uh, is from Craig Morris because uh, the software called GeneMania uh, was um, has been developed a few years ago by Craig Morris in collaboration with Gary Bader, and GeneMania is still maintained by the Bader Lab at the Donnelly Center. So I will do a brief summary of the theory, uh, but the focus of the presentation, as I did for the other modules, would be on the applications of GeneMania in our current project. So GeneMania uh, answer two type of questions as um, it has been explained in the recorded video. So two different type of questions. So one is just when you input one gene. So when you input one gene into GeneMania, the question that you are trying to answer is what does my gene do? And you also can input like a, a few genes, uh, 10 genes. And then your question that you want to answer with GeneMania is give me more genes like this. So this is a summary of the keywords, uh, some keywords defining gene mania. Uh, so gene mania is a functional interaction network. So, I mean, today, the whole day, we are working with functional interaction networks, the same with the React MFI network. So nodes in the network are genes, and they are connected by edges. So edges are the lines between the nodes if they are functionally associated. So for example, proteins may know to physically interact with each other, or they can belong to the same biological pathway. So that's two ways to be um, connected functionally. And uh, they can be also known to co-localize in the same tissues, for example. So all functional networks are may merge in GeneMania as a global network that would gather all these different networks and there are weights associated with them. So to predict the function of a, of a gene, GeneMania used the concept of guilt by association, and GeneMania finds genes and networks associated with our genes of interest. So uh, GeneMania is available as a web app and a Cytoscape app. So for the lab, we are going to start first with the Cytoscape app, and then um, there is also the same lab with the web app if you want to try. And in the next slides, I'm going to present example where it's easier to use the web app when you just Google GeneMania and then you enter a few genes or where you want to do more complex networks. And in this case, you use the Cytoscape app. So just a summary of the theory. So, um, so here with the puzzle piece, I've represented the different networks that are used by GeneMania to connect our genes. So it could be physical interaction, non-physical interaction between two proteins. Uh, it could be a predicted physical interaction, shared protein domain. So each protein have the same domain. So then we put a line between the two proteins, genetic interaction, co-localization or co-expression. And there is a weight associated with them. Um, and then we construct the network. So uh, each line um, is a is a connection from the network and each different color comes from the different network. So, so some, some tools, they would gather all the network and would, they would just put one line that is the sum of the different networks. But Gmania really, um, you keep the information of the, of the, 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 net, the source of the network. So that's why you have the different lines. So label propag propagation can be used to associate a gene, gene with an unknown function. So here is a query gene, the gene with the unknown function to another set of genes. So um, here, this is an example of how it could work. So first we have small nodes and big nodes. So the large nodes, they, they are large in size because they are connected with each other. 
and um, this one is the query genes and we want to guess the function of these genes the red let's say the red uh, color would be a function so we know that these two are a function a but we don't know the, the the function of this because these nodes here like intermediate size are related to the big red node by this label propagation or heat diffusion we can assign uh, the function a to those genes we are less confident for sure because it's a prediction but we assign the function a so that's the color orange and because my query gene here is connected to this node we can also by guilt by association predict that this gene a is also related to the function a because it is is functionally related to the other genes that are known to to have this function a and for sure we could not assign function a uh, function let's say this one these nodes have function b we could not assign function b to this this node because they are not related uh, so the network weight so i've seen uh, i uh, so the, the weight here so we have seen that there are different weights to uh, that is um, that, that are used to build the network and guess the gene function. And just to tell you that um, you have a parameters in GeneMania where you can adjust the weighting. And by um, so automatically, the weighting is associated for, to give more weight to the pathway network. I think it's the blue network here. The pathway network comes from the GoBP, Go Biological Process, because we are trying to guess a function. So that's why it makes sense to, to, to give this. Uh, network um, weight, um, but also sometimes you can put equal to by network. So all the networks uh, in each individual main categories of networks would have the same weight and it's you use it when you want to get all the information about your genes. You don't want to select just uh, in one direction. And it's better to try it, to try the different parameters on Genomania to understand <laughs> the um, the consequences on the network that you are going to create so uh, now some applications of um of gene mania so uh, like mainly based on my projects on how i use it and hopefully that gives you uh, ideas on how to use it for your own project and also uh, i'm going to mention if i um, prefer to use it on the cytoscape app or on the on the website so the first one, as we said, the, the first question with GeneMania is we query one gene. We don't know the function and uh, it predicts the function. So here I um, tried it with IPO4 because that was like in my work. Um, my question was, well, uh, do, uh, I mean, do a query of IPO4, which is an importing. So it's the role of IPO4 is to import proteins into the nucleus, but IPO4 is part of the family of importing. So I had to do not only the, the work of I, on IPO4, but the question that I was asked to, to solve is do, do it on uh, the family of importance. And ha I had no knowledge of importance. That was my, my first time uh, working on IPO4. So I, what I did, I just uh, uh, copy and paste IPO4 in my GeneMania search box and it gave me all these genes and I've extracted all these genes and I, I did my, my heat map and my analysis with all these genes and then uh, this is the comparison with a diagram that illustrates the importing uh, family and then you can see if you look at that that a lot of or many maybe not all but almost all the important genes that were important were retrieved by Gminia. So that saved me a lot of times instead of uh, Google and PubMed and looking at the page papers to gather all the genes of the important, I just did it in five minutes. So this is one example. And I did the same with this one. So this one, uh, these two genes, EZH1 and uh, SUS12, they were part of my hits you know, when I did my, my RNA sequencing and they were part of my hits. So I, I looked at the, the, the function of these genes and I kind of understood that they were part of this PRC2 complex, um, which is the polycom repressive complex, but that was about 
this. I didn't have more knowledge than that. So I uh, copy and paste these two genes now in um, gene mania. And again, my my what I want my goal wanted I wanted to retrieve all the 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 protein complex for the PRC2 to to do a, a more comprehensive analysis and my heat map and to make sure that all the complex was uh, affected in my experiment. So um, this is also how um, Gene Mania helped me with that. And I also did in the Gene Mania web app because I just Google Gene Mania and just copy and paste my, my gene. And then there is a function to export the gene list and that's the way I did it. Uh, so that's a third example. That's absolutely not uh, my project, but uh, I thought I, that um, it was also interesting. I think there is the paper, the reference paper here, and I think they did gene mania in this reference paper. So they were working on uh, Alzheimer disease, and what they were doing is looking for uh, mutations in DELs, and they found 206 um, variants when they uh, studied um, Alzheimer's disease patient versus, uh, so early onset Alzheimer's disease patient versus control. And uh, so these 260 variants, so that's NIPs, deletions, mutations, they could associate this with, 50, uh, with 23 genes. So now they wanted to know the function of these 23 genes because they were not found together, the 23 genes, they were find some, in, in patient one, some in patient two. So that's the results of the global analysis. So they used GeneMania. So they, they put their input, their 23 genes in, into GeneMania. And the first goal is to find the connection between these genes. And they found that actually these genes were known to be functionally related to each other. So that's the first result that they got. And then uh, GeneMania, so using the, the function prediction is going to add genes related to those genes. So this is the query genes are the ones that you see with the black border. And the, the other genes that were added by GeneMania are the smaller genes. So then you, um, what, the, what is useful is that it, connect, it could connect two genes. So you have two genes for your query, for example, A and A, a and C, they are not connected, but by using the linker, now your, your two genes A and C are connected by this linker gene. So you expand your network. And also now that you have this network, basically you, your goal is to find the genes that are important in the early onset of Alzheimer's disease. So first you started with, with your core of 23 genes, but uh, maybe you retrieve these other genes as well that are important. <laughs> And uh, when you apply the functional enrichment on this, so on the left, you have the, the pathway enrichment for those genes. And then you see that it's also um, related to like to neuron function. So it gives you some reassurance that um, these genes work together in some, in some brain function, and then you can uh, further analyze them. <coughs> and so this one was done uh, in the app, but you could have done it in the site in, in the in the web version. But um, it's starting to be a bigger network, so maybe you want to go back to the Cytoscape app. So the Cytoscape app will have um, the advantage that you can play with the visual style. You can merge uh, networks. You can import attributes. So that would be um, one reason that you move to the Cytoscape app. So that's another example. Uh, this is 43 genes implicated in cholesterol metabolism. And basically they just wanted to do a nice figure for their paper. So they had their 43 genes, but they wanted to connect it in, in some sort of diagram as a network. And so they used GeneMania. So I recognized the brown line of for shared domain. So all these uh, proteins, there they seems to have a shared domain, which is a useful information. The linker genes here, they could connect, for example, um, so this, this one is a gene that is added by GeneMania and could uh, connect these two nodes with the other nodes. So it adds some connection to make um, the link better and the figure better. And they added their, their um, 
they are visual visual styles. I think the inner the, the center of the node were was for their 24 time points or three hours time points, and the, the border node was for their 21 hour time points. So that's another example. And then you've seen it. So then we might have seen it um, yesterday at the end of uh, module module three G profiler lab. Then when you have created your your um, your heat map, then you can right click and have directly the the gene mine, gene mania network. And why is it useful? Is that you could have a pathway that is very significant but contains sub networks in it so it could be i think it was like rna let's say rna translation or rna i don't know i cannot read it but some rna processing translations it's kind of a big network and then if you do gene mania what you are going to do is you are going to find the sub networks into your full networks and um you can using the a little bit like reactor MFI. So once you do the functional enrichment, you can click on the function and it would highlight the genes corresponding to the function. So then in this case, in one node, I could uh, extract sub uh, five modules and annotate more precisely my uh, network. And this is another example of when I use it. So um, so maybe for some of you, this is a really advanced topic. This is not something personally I do, but there is the possibility to add your model organism. So gene mania basically, um, there are a lot of organism possible, but you also can create your own um, database. So you just import your database and you can construct the networks. And um, there is possibility to use GeneMania as an example to assemble different interaction networks that you might have for your research question. So basically use the algorithm and uh, modify it for your own needs. So this one actually, so Ruth was implicated in, in this. This is MDX, it's a patient classifier algorithm that is based on the GeneMania algorithm and you have the reference. So for me, it's really advanced, but I wanted to, to show it to you because uh, we are working on different projects and uh, that could be very useful for you. So I think this is, uh, oh yeah. So this is the last slide for Gene Minia. Do you have any question for Gene Minia? No? So then uh, for the lab, we are going to also use the string app just a little bit. So the string app is also, um, going to give you a functional interaction network so uh, you will um, have the choice between some different database and uh, so when we say functional association it could be any relationships between the proteins like pathway relationships and physical interaction is when we know that the, the, the two protein non, uh, are physically connected to each other so we are going to use the string app that is actually I think included in the Insight Escape app, and that then you can also install it. And uh, so first you, you create like a very beautiful network, but uh, there are also options to do functional enrichment and so on. Um, yeah, so this is the functional enrichment on the string app. So this is these two that we are going to use in the lab of uh, module five now, and we are going to see it uh, also a little bit in module six. And this one is a new tool. So I just wanted to mention to you because I found it interesting. I've never used it in my research, but I was like doing some PubMed research on the different tools. And uh, I say, oh, wow, well, this one is interesting as well. So I wanted to be exhaustive and present you different tools. So FunCup seems to be very promising, very well maintained. It's a web app, but it has really the same idea as uh, creating a functional network as we are seeing today with different, uh, um, also with, um, you know, co-expression, pathway, protein, protein interaction, a lot of model organisms, uh, seems to be very user-friendly. So if you're interested by, uh, in your project and you need to con construct some networks or just, um, just to analyze some genes, um, I would like to mention this tool to you as well. So that's it for the slides.